Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is County Digital TV. Na kama kawaida in case you new here na huja subscribe, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And today's story ni kuhusu jamaa mmoja ambaye anajulikana kama Weekly Vincent Ward. Uh, who was a police imposter and who masterminded theft of 72 million haste. So his story itakuwa a narration from one of my friend ambaye atakuwa anatupatia one uh, step at a time what ha what transpired or what happened ndio hiyo masterminding iweze kukuwa successful and they managed to steal 72 million Kenyan shillings so guys listen to this one this here is the life of one weekly of Vincent Owar aka Vini the junior police officer who masterminded the theft of 72 million shillings from the Standard Chartered Bank in 2019. According to a war, he was a patrol police officer registered under service number 101427 and operating within Kayole and sometimes Spring Valley Police Station. A war was very much conversant with police operation. This earned him friends in the service. It is then that he met Chris Ayenda who was also a police officer inspired by 50 cents a get rich or dry trying sentiments the two would plan on how to rob 200 million from the G4S transit vans they went on a retreat and an outline was drawn robbing a finance institution is not an easy task and so they needed insiders from the bank It took them five months to gather all the resources and the intelligence that they'd require for this mission. The day that the Lord had made finally came. It was on the 5th September 2019. Vini received intelligence that two G4S vans had left industrial area to load money to a standard chartered bank ATM in Nairobi West. He immediately sprang into action. Unbelievably, Vini and his accomplices reported to work. Alia the new show however it did, it did not raise suspicion since they were all clad in AP combat when the names of the officers were called it was Vini and his accomplices who stood the task at exactly 6 a.m. in the morning the vans set off immediately a white Toyota Noah was dispatched to Nairobi West Standard Chartered Bank ATM this was the car that they would ferry the loot When they arrived at their destination, the forest officers opened the vaults as they awaited to be given passwords to load the money on the ATMs. To their surprise, Vini and his accomplices came out pointing guns on them. They had to lay low and watch the million getting stuck in a different vehicle. The tin bags full of money were loaded on the getaway Toyota Noah. The amount in total was 72 million. It was short of the desired loot of 200 million but it was still a big deal. Off they went. When the real cops assigned to the bank arrived at work, they were informed that their job had already been taken by their peers who had arrived earlier. This prompted them to raise an alarm. But even before they could make their first move, they received a distraught call from a G4S officer at the ground informing them that they had already been robbed of the money. It was indeed a bad day at work but to Vini and her complices it was the best day of their lives or so they thought the police were now moving on speed to corner the goons but the goons were also servicemen and so they understood the psychology of their colleagues it was now a game of chess the miscreants sped off to the Ngoto forest in Kiambu quickly they shared the loot and everyone went his own way Baffled by his newly acquired millionaire status, Chris Ayenda walked into a showroom and purchased a brand new Subaru and quickly he traveled to the village to scare away Mwalimu Amat. Indeed, he had made it in life. Police investigations had led to the arrest of bank and DFOS workers who were on duty on the fateful day after it was discovered that the CCTV cameras were tampered with. The following day as the workers were booked to court, a police discovered money bags at the motor forest. They now narrowed down to the area of scrutiny. The following day, the getaway Toyota Noah was discovered at a garage in Kikuyu, where it was being painted black. 
Two mechanics were arrested. With now a sizable number of suspects, interrogations intensified. The goal was to nab the masterminds and recover the lost millions. First to be trailed and arrested was a cop, Chris Ayenda, who was chilling at his home area in Kisi, giving local babes sleepless nights with his brand new Subaru. With him was 4 million shillings in cash and a Subaru worth 1.5 million. After being interrogated, he set up his friend Vini. Vini was chilling at Seko in Kendu Bay awaiting to be picked by Chris to run to Uganda. Upon his arrest, Vini was found in possession of 3 million shillings in cash. Now, Vini and Chris were in police custody, but more than 60 million was still missing. This continued to trouble police. The suspects would appear in court and complain about torture from the police, prompting their release with 1 million bond. As police intensified their search for the missing millions, on 16th September 2019, they arrested a G4S officer in Kiambu. The officer had stashed 1 million cash in his mother's couches. The mother and the brother were also arrested. Two weeks later, on 27th September, the police arrested a couple seeking anticipatory bill to hinder their arrest in connection to the 72 million heist. The two, Simon Karuku and Njeri, were also police officers. Karuku led the detectives to his sister, a KDF officer at Kahawa Barracks who he claimed to have left the loot with. His sister told the detective that she had left the money with a cop friend only identified as Florence. When Florence was questioned, she said that her boyfriend ran away with the loot. Detectives, however, managed to impound a white Mac X which was believed to be bought from the proceeds of the loot. The court case was now going cold, the files getting dusty, but to silence the case once and for all, one thing had to be done. The mastermind had to be silenced. On the 24th of March 2020, Vinny was out on bond or shot dead at Kayole Junction. Official DCI social media pages disclosed that Vinny was killed in a deadly shootout with the police. His lawyer, Cliff Ombeta, would take to his social media handle to refute the claim. Ombeta shared a short video showing Vinny's last moments before he was killed. Contrary to the claims by DCI, the video showed Vinny completely unharmed and at the mercy of the officers. Why would the police kill him? And why would they lie that he was killed in a shootout? Who were the police working for? These are some of the questions that have remained unanswered to this day. A human rights activist by the name Alamin Kimadi took to his social media to shed light on the murder of Vincent O'War, claiming that he wasn't the only cop to die in connection to the 72 million highest. Two other cops from Kayole had also been killed by their colleagues in connection to the same. According to Kimadi, a senior police officer from the station was driving a Yenda Subaru which was supposedly impounded and parked at Langata police station. Aipoa took up the case of Vinny's execution and managed to charge six officers in connection to his murder. As the mastermind of the haze lay in his grave, the court case remains cold. However, one question remains a puzzle. Who was behind this? And where did the 60 million go? Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe for more amazing episodes.